welcome to episode 9 of the Zazu podcast. My name is Caroline. Uh, you can find me on Ravelry as Wallbox, on Instagram as Wall underscore box, and my Etsy shop at zazuyarns.etsy.com. First of all, do not ever ask people to guess your age when you're not wearing makeup. That is just stupid. But I did. So, let's look at the results, shall we? First of all, I want to thank everyone for responding because it was, I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, there were people that had all these uh, reasons why they thought I was a certain age. There were really funny response, uh, like the one from Maya, uh, from um, the Show My Lean podcast. Uh, she said she thought I was either 24 or 32, which <laughs> it doesn't make any sense, Maya, but it's funny. <laughs> so uh, what I did was I took all your reactions and um, looked at what the average was. So, the average on YouTube was 28.36. Um, on Revelry, you guys were a little less harsh on me. The average was 27.6. So, all in all, I think it's around 28, which is good because I'm going to tell you what my real age is in a minute. Um, I have a new best friend because that's Mima Kelly, that's her revelry name. She thought I was 24. So we are definitely going to have a cup of coffee, Mima Kelly, because you are my new best friend. Then there was also someone that is not my best friend anymore. <laughs> oh no. Um, she thought I was a little older than I actually am. That is Cindy Orton. You actually had the highest pre um, reaction or the highest age. And that is 32. So we're gonna have to have a cup of coffee as well and talk that over. Um, then there were two people that guessed the right age. So, drumroll, Gia K60 and Thelma Madsen were right because I am 29. Um, so, <laughs> that was fun. I'm actually turning 30 on November 5th, so just a few more months left in the 20s and then I'm going to the other side of I don't know what but that's going to be interesting um, thank you for all the reactions I, re I, I, I really laugh my ass off and um, well it was a, a nice thing to try, so um, I might think of some other weird question to pop and uh, see what you guys think about that. Uh, but I don't have an idea for that yet. So again, if you have questions, just put them in the questions and answers thread or um, ask me where or whenever you can. Um, I think I'll just go into whips and uh, spare you the details on my weekend because I actually have a part of my weekend um, tucked in the acquisitions um, part. So let's um, get those whips on, shall we? Um, the first whip I've worked on, and I didn't work a lot on it um, because I was working on something else, but I will show you later, um, are Seep's 
hiking socks or socks, but he's going to use them for more of a hiking thing. Uh, although they do have to fit him well for that, so we'll just see. It's it's kind of a tryout project. So these are the socks, and last time I finished the leg and you might think well I still don't see any heel but that's because I wanted to try something new out and that is the afterthought heel so as you can see there is a contrasting color right here uh, and that's where I will put the heel um, I've never done this um, but I don't know, I, I just thought it would be nice to be able to like, finish the whole sock and then only um, have the heel left to do. I don't know, I think, I think that might make me knit socks faster, maybe, I don't know. And I thought that the afterthought heel uh, was also a heel without gaps because you don't have the short rows, you're just um, going round and round. Although you do have to pick up some extra stitches in the corners for the first row, but that won't be a problem. Um, what I'm doing, uh, the whole leg is one by one rib, and as I already said, uh, these are going to be hiking socks or used for hiking, so um, it's important to me that they fit well and that they're not too loose but not too tight as well so that's why I did the whole ribbing because that's stretchy but it's also snug on the leg um, and I do want to continue continue that fit so um, on the bottom of the foot which is already this part of course um, I'm doing a normal stockinette and at the front I'm continuing the one by one rib. Then when the foot gets well the part between the heel and the the toes I guess I want to make it even tighter or more snug just as you uh, get when you buy hiking socks. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that either decrease or maybe switch to smaller needles. I might do that, but I'm going to have to see. I'm going to try them on his foot um, while I go and then decide when and where I have to start doing something else. And then if I finish that first sock and it's all good and it fits him well, then of course the second one can be done in the exact same way and I'm, that's why I'm writing down what I'm doing um, constantly so I know how many rows I did before I decreased in the leg and how many stitches I have in which part and just to be sure. Um, I'm knitting these on uh, my Knit Pro Novas interchangeables and I think this is a three millimeter. Oh and if you're wondering why my hand is blue, I dyed yarn yesterday, so and sometimes you get some dye over your hands, at least. I do, and I'm not the type that wears gloves all the time, so that's what happens. And I'm knitting these socks out of Fable by Drops in the colorway 671. So I'm hoping to get these finished before we leave for Indonesia, which is coming close, you guys. Um, one and a half weeks, so not this Thursday, but next Thursday we will leave, which is September 3rd. Yay! Then, the next one, um, oh, that's the new shawl pattern by Maria, 
from the Stitch in Sweden uh, podcast. Um, I didn't work on this much. Uh, that's because I had something else on the needles that I really wanted to finish for you guys before um, uh, taping this episode, or videoing. Um, recording, that was the word I was looking for. I, um, last time I showed you this, I made a mistake. I had to read back and I already told you that I put all the stitches on the needle again, but there were a lot of dropped stitches I had to fix. So what I actually did on this is fix all those drops, dropped stitches. So it's actually, you, you won't be able to see any progress or not really. Um, I will hold these too. Um, but I fixed the whole row and then I knitted a few rows up to the third uh, lace pattern repeat. So I'm already in that uh, like two rows. So not much to show you, but at least the uh, promise to or not promise well the starting point to really go further with this one. To I, I don't know where my English words went this weekend, but I lost them all, sorry. Um, so I can finally really continue this. And um, I'm planning on doing that because, as I said, I didn't work on this much because of another project. Um, I'm knitting this out of this beautiful yarn, which is, I'm going to show you, Linda Wool, and this is yarn I bought on a fair, a Dutch wool fair, or whatever, crafting fair, I guess. And uh, you cannot buy this online. She uh, does have a shop, um, but it does not include the yarn. She said she only sells this at fairs. So that's another good reason to come to the Netherlands and go to a fair with me or something like that. And now I'm actually seeing that I'm cutting my head off constantly, so I will be going down a bit. Um, this is 50% British Falkland Merino and 50% Tencel, and the Tencel is actually what makes it shine. And I think you will be able to see that it's, it's got a real shine to it. Um, and the colorway is Red Tiger Eye. So, I'm really pleased with how that's moving up. I think this is a great color to uh, wear in the fall on a black coat or whatever. Love it. So I'm hoping to, uh, I'm actually hoping to get this uh, done before I leave for Indonesia because Maria uh, wants us to be done by, I guess, September 11 or 10, I don't know. Um, might be a little bit sooner, but um, I'll be gone and um, I don't think I will have access to um, Wi-Fi a lot, to internet a lot. So uh, to be able to send her the pictures of a finished object and their remarks or possible notes I've made um, I don't know where that sentence went, but I will not have the possibility to do that, probably. So I am really going to try to finish finish that before we leave. But on the other hand, I have to finish so much before we leave, so I don't know. And if I don't finish this before we leave, I will... I guess I will bring it to knit on the plane, although 
I can't switch needles or I'm not going to switch needles and these are not wood so this will have to go into my suitcase and I will knit on it from Indonesia. Wow! I know that my last episode was called Where Did My Brain Go? but I think I didn't find it back yet. But that's project or whip number two. Then um, whip number three, I finally cast it on the exploration station. So I will show you that and I just cast it on yesterday evening. I posted a picture on Instagram for you who follow me there. Oops. And this is oops. This is where I am. So not far. And I don't know what's wrong with me, but I started this and I already had to rip back three times because this stripe you see here that needs to be in this color, obviously. And for some reason I started knitting it with blue first. Then I was like, oh, I have to do that in the brown. So then I went back and for some reason picked the gray and started knitting the stripe in the gray. Well, I just... So I was knitting in the gray and I was like, oh, what am I doing? I'm doing it wrong again. So I read back and then we had dinner or something. And then I started the stripe again. And you will not believe this. You will not believe this. I picked this color. Can you imagine that? I mean, you do, I, I did this wrong already two times. You would think I would pay attention the third time. And come on, it's not that hard to pick the right color from just four colors. I picked this color and I knit it in the, I knit the stripe in the yellow or the mustard. So I was looking at it and I was like, oh my god, what am I doing? So I went back and then finally, because there was no other color left, I guess, to do, the, to do it wrong. Um, and the funny thing is, this color is not even in the shawl. It's not even supposed to be in the shawl, it was just it was just making friends with my other balls of yarn and they were just having their own tea party I guess so I just just picked it but it's not even in the shawl I didn't even so you go to your own home you have to go home so um and then I did pay attention and went a little further and then I got too comfortable with knitting blah 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 and then of course I made a mistake again so uh, for some reason I forgot to increase here so I'm going to have to I try to fix that with a uh, crochet needle crochet hook but that didn't work so I am going to rip back to the brown here and and do the white again. So um, I could have actually been twice as far, but if you're working like this, um, it's. I don't know what I, I what I was thinking. I I really don't. I was just my head was somewhere. Well, not here at least. So uh, still some sort of brain weird brain thing going on. So that's my whip number three, and um, I should have shown, well not should, I would have shown, uh, showed you my uh, mermaid socks because I really like to work on them but I really didn't find time and since these socks are for me you know what happens, we are women so 
if we are busy, we first do the things we have to do for other people, and then we pick up the thing that was for us the last. So I might uh, take those with me um, on the plane because I thought it would kind of be nice. Uh, I started that, them on the plane ride to Italy and then I can finish them, probably finish them on the plane ride to Bali, uh, Java, which is kind of fun, right? And they will be my mermaid slash traveler socks or something like that. I don't know. Um, then on to FOs. And uh, I have something in my eye. Um, I have a finished object. And you guys didn't see this yet. So I'm really excited because the thing that took almost all the time I had and literally I have been knitting on this the entire weekend from the morning until late at night um, I spent I literally spent my whole weekend knitting on this except for Friday um, when I went to Amsterdam but I will tell you about that in the acquisitions thread uh, thread there is no thread in the video, in the acquisitions part of this video. Brain! Um, I'm super excited! I finished my first own shawl pattern! And um, maybe I'm not supposed to say this, but I love it! Um, so I already know I'm going to knit this in all types of colors or whatever. So let me show you. Oh, it's kind of stuck on the chair. Wait. And I still have to cut some ends, but dun da 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 This is the pattern for the show. It's pretty big. I will show you. This is the middle. And then it goes all the way here. And I think it's even wider than my wingspan. Yes, it is. So, um, what, what what should I tell you about this? <laughs> I don't know. I like it. I love it. Um, obviously, it's a shawl in a triangular um, shape. And it has some lace detail to it. And a little bit of color, um, as you can see in the border. And then a pico bind-off. Kind of weird that my head is underneath it, but and I kind of invented a new stitch for this one, or at least I think I did because I don't know this stitch and I made it up myself. So um, I'm going to name that stitch after the pattern's name, but I don't have a na um, name for the shawl yet. I had a name, but then. I thought it wasn't really the name. It was. It didn't fit. It didn't totally fit the shawl. Does that make sense? I don't know. I will show you what it looks like when you're wearing it, or when I'm wearing it. So. Let me just tuck those under. So that's 
that's the pattern. And you can also, of course, wear it like that. And then you can cover your back uh, when you're cold and like snug up a little. Um, I already got three people that messaged me to test knit and I'm sorry I didn't reply yet um, but I thought I, I'd reply when the pattern was ready so I can actually give you some information about that and then you can decide if you still want to do that or not. Um, I could use like maybe one or I don't know two max ma a maximum of two other test knitters. So if you see this and you really like to test knit this, um, message me on Ravelry. Send me a private message on Ravelry, um, and then if there are too many people uh, applying for it, I will just pick one or two people uh, randomly, I guess. But the other three people uh, will be uh, contacted um, anyway. Or how do you say that? I don't know. They, they will be contacted. And I don't know how you say that, but they were the ones that applied first, so but I really like it, and I'm actually going to wear it for the however long the episode will last. And oops, so I have to leave in that end. Okay, so um, that's my first pattern, you guys. Yay! Um, and I'm, of course, really interested in what you think about that. If you like it or not, or... I don't know. Let me know. I would love to hear that. Then, um... Oh, and... Um, if you're up for testing, then it, you might, uh... like to know what yarn you... Um, need to do that. So you can decide up front if you will be able to do that or not. You will need 100 grams of fingering weight yarn, sock yarn or whatever, and another 15 grams in a contrasting color. And I'm sorry I don't have the ounce weight thing a lot of you guys have, but 100 grams is a normal skein with 420 meters, which is 400 and somewhat yards, I guess. I, I don't know for sure, but it's the normal, the, the normal regular um, sock yarn thing, skein, of which you can make two socks, one, one pair, and then you'll have something left. I don't know. Just that. Um, I knit this out of. Uh, my own hand dyed yarn, of course, um, in the overcast colorway, which is the gray, and then this color is the hay colorway, also Zazu yarns. And that's actually the color that was drinking tea with the colors from my exploration station show. Um, then let's move on to acquisitions. So, as I already said last, last time, uh, last Friday, I went to Amsterdam to see a friend of mine uh, who is pregnant, so I'm going to have to knit something for her as well. But she's, she's due in November, so I still have some time. She's having a boy. Um, I went to see her and, of course, I could not go to Amsterdam and miss Stephen and 
Penelope, the Stephen and Penelope shop again. So, I went there. And I will show you what I got. So, with my purchase came this bag. Which I'm going to show you. And on the back, there are these really cute bikes, because as you might know, um, the Netherlands is a real bike country. Everyone owns one or multiple bikes here. Everyone does stuff by bike here, because we are a crowded country and the city centers are partly not even allowed for cars or whatever. So everyone owns a bike here. And what did, did I buy? Well, first of all, I bought this book. The top-down sweater book by Interweave. And this is the second Interweave book I bought. Oh. Um, and that is because there are patterns in this book, um, like these some sort of basic sweater patterns in this book, um, and um, they have a lot of charts to modify them to your size. So I will try to show you that, but with every pattern, there is multiple pages. There are multiple pages of um, charts with all these, um, well, numbers of how many stitches will remain after whatever rows you have to knit for a certain size, and that's just really, really handy. Um, there are different sweaters in it. Um, I will show you some. This one. And this one. And I will show you just one other. Since this one. So a lot of options. Oh, there are, of course, there are a few um, sweaters on the back. So there are a lot of options uh, with this book. And I really like something like that, but then with long sleeves uh, for the winter, so I might try that once. And I really like that as well with a the color that flips over. So, I, I actually like them all. Um, so, I think this will be a lovely book to pick out some, some sweater pattern project from. So, um, that was the first thing I bought. Then, I saw this. It's the uh, knit bot um, pattern pattern book uh, by Hannah Fetti. Um, and the reason I bought this is because I've actually been wanting to pass on a featherweight cardigan for a really long time now. And I saw this, and I was like, that kind of looks like the featherweight. And it actually is. So I'm going to try to show you this without leaving the pattern away. But that is the featherweight cardigan. And 
I just really like the construction of it. I think it's it will be a fairly simple knit and um, if done with the right yarn, I think this could be really beautiful. And then there are obviously some other patterns in it. This is a beret or a pet and there are other sweaters in it. Also like this one. And oh, this one's nice as well. And these patterns are all knit with Quince and Co fiber uh, or yarn, um, which I'm not going to use because obviously you cannot leave that shop with only books. So when I saw that pattern in that book, I thought, let's pick up the yarn for that featherweight sweater or cardigan. So what I bought is this gorgeous yarn. It's Malabrigo in the Pearl 10 colorway. And it's a really gray purple color. It's, it's purple, but it has so many gray undertones that um, depending on the light you're in, it looks different. So I really like that. Um, so in the shop, it looked really gray with a little bit of purple undertones. And then when I got home, it looked more purple with a gray undertone. And then at night, uh, in, well, in artificial light, uh, it almost looks black, uh, but it's actually just purple. And I bought four stains of that because it's a um, lace weight so on each each uh, skein is 50 grams and has 470 yards and it's baby merino wool so it's so soft and it's a single so I'm curious how that will look single and, um, well, I don't know, I've never um, knit a sweater out of singles, so I'm really curious about that, and I can't wait to cost this on, so I'm, I'm planning on taking this with me to Indonesia, because um, it's a perfect bigger project with not that many yarn to carry around because all in all this is 200 grams which is not much for a sweater i think so um i think uh i think i will really like that like knitting that um and as you can see when i was in the shop um the shop owner and now i forgot her name Oh, well, just look it up. I, I don't know. I, I don't know anymore. Um, she actually wound up a skein for me. She offered to do that so I could start right away. So, of course, what I did was pay attention to how she did that. She actually had the same swift as I have. Um, which is a really cheap, um, very bright green plastic thing. Uh, it's plastic with um, steel, uh, I guess, or how you say that? I don't know. Metal, metal things. Um, but she did have uh, another ball winder, and hers was a little bit bigger and. Obviously, I didn't ask her 
which brand it was or where she got it. So I am going to contact her to ask her what it was because this is the cake that came out of it. And there's nothing sticking out. Yeah, well, obviously the, the beginning thread is sticking out, but this is the bottom. And as you might see, nothing is coming out of it. Yesterday, I wound up the cakes to do the, um, to start the Exploration Station shawl, and I did them, I, I wound them up, uh, all, I wound up all four of them, and every cake has this. That's the bottom of the cake. Every cake has this. So, also, stuff coming out um, in the bottom. This one. Stuff coming out. So, um, I might just get another ball winder. Although I do know, which I said before, that Maria from the Sitch in Sweden podcast is able to wind perfect cakes with her ball winder, which is exactly the same as mine. So I don't know how she does that, but I just think I will buy uh, another one. So uh, I will contact her and ask her where she got that. But isn't this yarn pretty? I love it. And obviously the color is not coming out right, but I can't help that. Um, and then when I um, checked out there, I saw these cards. which have a needle conversion chart on the back. And I thought that was really clever, so I picked one up, they were free. And I thought it was, was perfect. So I can put it in well, a project bag or whatever. Um, so I can always see uh, whatever pattern I use, because some patterns are uh, American, some are European and then that one is that chart is really handy. Um, I did make a video of the Stephen and Penelope shop because guys it's so wonderful it um, it's so it's it's a really it's a modern shop but it's a really cozy shop as well it, it just feels right I mean you actually walk in there and you're like, okay, um, where can I put my bed? I will live here. Um, that I thought, I just want you to see what it looks like uh, and enjoy that with me a little. So I will put that video here. That was really fun. Um, after going to that shop, um, we uh, went to my friend's home, but because that's in the north of Amsterdam, we had to cross the water. And um, that weekend, or not really that weekend, last week, it was sale in Amsterdam, which is a really big event uh, that takes place every five years. Uh, in which um, all the big boats, uh, 
like the old Viking ships or whatever and the old um, trading ships I don't know if you call it trading ships but from way back and uh, um, ships from the Navy and ships from all over the world um, like Oh, how do I say that? Uh, like these really special ships from all over the world uh, come to Amsterdam and just um, come by and they go up and down the canal there, which is a, well, it's not a canal, it's like a river. Um, and it's a whole event uh, with fireworks every night and uh, all these other people, just the normal people, uh, going in boats and, um, I don't know how you say that, going, uh, going with them up and down the canal. How? Oh, what's the word? Okay, I'm going to look this up because now it's, I'm, I'm getting frustrated. Because I should know this word. I really should. If my computer wants to do it. So. The word. <laughs> the word is sail. Wow, this is... Okay, if you think I'm stupid now, I don't mind. I mean, this really, wow, this is an intelligent episode, people. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so the event is called sale, and I can't, I can't think of the word sale, which is really dumb. Okay, whatever, now I'm going to have to, I don't know. Well, the upside of this, when you're this far down the brainless phase, you can only go up, right? It can only go be better from this point on, because if it gets worse, I'm, I don't know, probably not even able to record anymore. But, okay, so there are normal people going up and down the canal, sailing up and down with them. Um, so you see all these boats, which is, it's really impressive. Um, so I, when we were on the ferry that uh, goes from one side, to, uh, from the, the south of Amsterdam to the north, um, I took a small video, which I will insert here as well. Then uh, I'm moving on to the question and answers um, part because I got some questions and I will try to keep this a little short because uh, I have a lot of, uh, I, don't, I've, I think I'm already talking for I don't know how long but long. Um, first of all I wanted to thank someone who mentioned my podcast and mention hers because she is an awesome person and she reminds me of myself so much and now I don't feel alone with all the brainless stuff because she is, she's so funny. Um, and that's Disa from Disa's Craftwork podcast. Um, she is, um, she's just so funny. She's, she sits down to record and then she tells you about stuff she's making and then she's like, oh. I forgot to take that with me and then she gets up takes it sits down wants to talk about the next project <laughs> she forgets that as well so she's going the other way and getting that so i just i don't know if that was your last episode visa but or 
the one before that, I don't know, but I started laughing um, and I couldn't get out of it anymore, so thank you for that laugh. Um, then I saw in the statistics of my uh, podcast that there is almost, that almost 5% of my viewers is male. I really like that. So, um, if you are one of the men watching this podcast, um, reveal yourself. Um, tell me, uh, tell us who you are and what you are working on. And because I'm, I'm really interested in what men knit because obviously, uh, I can imagine that they don't uh, knit that many shawls like these, but more maybe scarves and hats and stuff. I, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Um, I'm just curious what um, what you guys knit. Um, and if you are knitting um, sweaters or other garments, uh, which patterns you're using, because maybe us women can uh, use those nice patterns for our men. So, um, we might help each other. So, if you want to, um, please uh, comment in the introductions thread uh, in the Ravelry group for this podcast, which is the Zazu podcast group. Right? The Zazu? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, the Zazu podcast group on Ravelry. I would love to hear from you guys. Uh, then, Robin who is Memawnitz, M-E-M-A-W Knits on Ravelry, if I have other uh, crafty uh, hobbies or other hobbies, uh, I guess. Um, so I'm going to quickly um, tell you about all the crafty stuff I do because I, um, I actually do a lot. So, before I got my uh, economics degree, or I don't know how you say that, um, I studied uh, for becoming a goldsmith. So, I'm also that because I graduated. Um, so, before um, this, I worked a few years as a goldsmith and, well, made jewelry, made uh, wedding rings, made... Uh, other rings, um, just you know, the gold and silver rings with gemstones, with diamonds, um, pendants, um, necklaces, bracelets, uh, whatever you can think of, um, and all in um, the precious gemstone category and the real gold and silver, um, which was a lot of fun. Uh, but it didn't really pay much, and I did have my own company in it, uh, but that didn't really work out. So, um, so you, so you know. Um, I also weave. I have this really big loom uh, from Ashford. Uh, so I also weave, but because we have a really tiny house, I. Um, not I, I, I did weave, but um, it's a little bit hard to uh, cast on on the loom because if you want to make a scarf, you have to have a long table to put the I don't know how you say that. that there's a wooden thing, and then you wrap uh, the yarn around that. And uh, sorry, I'm I oh a really itchy nose. Um, you have to wrap it around that, and then you have the right length. If depending on how big your or how long your table is, you will have the right length or whatever. I don't have a big table here uh, because we live in a really small place, so um, I haven't worked on that for a while. But I will definitely pick that up. Um, when we move, because we are looking for a house, um, to buy a house. 
Uh, I did weave a really nice rug kind of thing that hangs in a door opening, um, but it's not here to show you. It's actually in the door opening, so <laughs> I will try to maybe make a, a bonus episode someday with, where I can show you stuff like that. Um, I also uh, have a lot of woven baskets which I made from newspapers. Yes, <laughs> sounds weird, but I do it. Um, I actually make everything you can there is to make. That, let's put it that way, I, I, because that's true. They always call me the everything you can make maker in my family. So whenever someone has a problem or wants to make something or something is broken, they come to me and ask me for a solution or to help them or whatever. Um, but I also did that, and I don't have any to show you here as well, so this is kind of a boring segment. Um, I also did woodwork. I designed my and made, m built my own chest. Um, I, oh, I also did the kitchen in our place. I'm actually the handy one, um, so whenever something needs to be uh, hanged on, hung, hang on the wall, uh, or some other uh, thing. It's not me asking my boyfriend to do that, but my boyfriend asking me to do that. So uh, we replaced the whole kitchen here, and I did that. He uh, was the one that got the sandwiches and uh, hold the held the screwdrivers and stuff, and things like that. So he was my third and fourth hand, but um, I actually did all the work. Um, then, oh, I also make music. I don't know if you see it, but that is my synthesizer. Um, and I'm, I've been playing the piano since I was seven, six, seven, I don't know. I started playing violin when I was four or five. Uh, which is ridiculously young, I guess, and I did that for a year, but then uh, at my lessons, uh, at my teacher's place, I he had a really big piano, and I was always intrigued by that. So, um, after a year, I said to my mom, Mom, I really want to play, learn to play the piano. So, okay. Um, I got lessons in piano playing or uh, playing the piano, and I actually uh, did do that for uh, many years. I, I never really quit. I actually um, uh, did some sort of education to go to the conservatory. I don't know if you call it like that, uh, but uh, that's like the school uh, to go to if you want to have a career in music. Um, which I eventually didn't because I had to play a lot of classic stuff and although I do really like that, um, I'm more of the jazzy soul type of piano playing and I really wanted to learn that and I'm always composing stuff myself so I don't really uh, play from the paper, the, but if I hear something on the radio, like Alicia Keys or something else, I can replay it or play it by myself um, from ear. So if you gave me the book with the music in it, um, it would cost me a lot of energy to be able to play it, while if you just play the song for me once or twice, I can play it. So that's what I've been doing since. So I'm making my own music as well, uh, composing stuff and uh, because this is a synthesizer I can also put guitars underneath it or drums or whatever. Um, then you just play the tones you would have played uh, piano-wise and then switch it to another instrument and then you hear those tones in the other instrument, which is really fun. So 
if I'm having a music evening or night, I will be, I can play for years and uh, ears. <laughs> I can play for ears. I can play for hours. Weird, weird stuff, people. Um, so I also do that, and I also sing with that a little, and then oh, I also have uh, I also make things with clay. I um, draw sometimes. Um, I uh, paint. So let's just end the list here because I just make or try to make everything you there is to to make with your hands so um that's what i do that's why my boyfriend sometimes gets totally nuts by all the stuff i bring to our home because i have another creative idea um i have a lot of stuff because i have a lot of ideas it's actually I saw something on Facebook the other day. It said um, to creative people, uh, mess isn't mess, but the mess is ideas, and that's that's true. If I see stuff laying around, I'm like, oh, I can do this with that. Oh, oh, and I can make that with. Oh, or I could, yeah, and oh, and my boyfriend's like. Wow, this is messy. So, uh, I hope we can move really soon because he promised me I can have my own craft room and um, <laughs> then I will have the space to make all the clutter and stuff or not clutter or... I don't mean clutter, I mean all the messy ideas I want to without him being like, oh, our place is getting really messy, or whatever. Um, so that's my answer to you, Robin. R thank you uh, for asking me that question. And um, if there are people that have other questions, please post them, and I will uh, also answer answer them um, in the um, thread on Ravelry, but um, I will pick one or two questions out every week, so I can also um, answer them on the podcast. Okay, so um, now I will tell you a little bit about the shop update, uh, the big shop update that's coming. If you're not interested, thank you very much for joining me today, and uh, I wish you a really nice week. And if uh, you uh, do like that, stick around. Um, I am planning on having a pretty big um, shop update because I um, dyed up some yarns yesterday and I will be dyeing up some other yarn today or uh, Wednesday, but I think I will be doing that today. Um, so that shop update will be next weekend. I think that will be on Saturday, Saturday morning here, so for everyone that's east of where I am, uh, that will be Friday night when you guys are all asleep, so when you um, wake up, you will be able to see that. And um, otherwise, it will be Saturday afternoon for you. If you're no, if you're west from me, then it will be on Friday night for you. And if you're east from me, then it will be Saturday afternoon. Oh. Um. Then um, I will just show you the yarns uh, that will go into the shop. First of all, I have a new colorway, and um. Obviously, I have to grab it from the box because I'm so well prepared. And this is it.
and it's a rusty brown color and it's showing up a little lighter than it is um, just look in the shop I will make sure uh, that it has the correct or almost correct color there, like true to five, I think you guys say. But, um, and that's also going in my um, exploration station shell, as you can see. Um, it's a really lovely color. I think it's a really nice color uh, for fall stuff. It's it's brown, but it has a little bit of soft pinkish undertones, I guess. Um, I don't know. I think it's really nice. It's rusty. It's... I don't know. It's It has these... It's brown, but it's it's a warm brown, rusty brown with, with these different tones in it. I, I can't really explain, but... Um, in my shop you will probably see that better than on this screen because it looks a little pale uh, on the screen to me. So that's my new colorway and I didn't name that yet so if you want to know what it's called uh, look in my shop and then there you will see it. Then, um, Oh, I didn't say that, but um, this will be the last shop update before I leave for Indonesia. Good to mention. Um, so then there won't be a shop update for at least four weeks, at least. So if you want uh, one of my yarns, then go grab it before it's gone, because I will not be here to dye up new stuff. Um, which is why I'm trying to dye up as much as I can before I leave. Um, I oh, and um, I uh, will not be closing the shop because, as I already said, my best friend Laura is helping me. So uh, wh while I'm away, she will be sending out uh, the packages. So, um, then you can just order and you will just receive your order. So, um, that's really nice for her to do. Um, then I have some uh, one-of-a-kind um, colors, which I will show you. And that's this one. And it's way more purple than it looks on the screen. It looks more blue on the screen but it's it's really purple and you will be able to see that um, in the shop as well and here and there there are some speckles in it which I don't know if you can see that okay let me just pick a some some brown um, pinkish purplish and blue speckles I'm going to try to show you that. You see that over there? Well, um, I have two of these, and this is on my new base, um, which is more like a sport weight, I guess, between sport weight and worst weight. Um, so really nice to make hats and uh, scarves with, or, uh, well, more for um, fall and winter stuff. Well, not specifically winter, but... Uh, and this is a merino, 100% superwash merino yarn, which is it's really soft and squishy. Then... On that same base, I had some speckled fun. I have a tonal gray with a lot of speckles in brown, in uh, a little bit of turquoise and purplish color. 
and it is a really tonal gray so as you can see it's darker and a lot lighter and some parts have a lot of speckles and then some parts do not really so I think this is a really fun color I think you can make something really nice, nice out of this uh, and I have two of these as well um, so get them while you can because I, I don't I'm not sure if I'm going to dye this up again. I was just having some fun and trying out some new stuff and this is what came out of it. Um, so that's number two. Then on that same base, so as you can see I'm introducing that base now. I have 50 shades of brown and this is perfect for as I already said, perfect for hats and, and stuff. Also perfect to make a sweater. Um, I do not have a sweater quantity of this yet in the shop. So if you want that, you'll have to uh, send me a message to make that for you in the same dye bath. Um, and you will be able to do that until next weekend. And otherwise, I am sorry, I will have to dye that up when I get back. So I could dye that up um, on Saturday, Saturday, maybe Sunday, and then it's slush. Um, so I have two of these as well on the bigger uh, base. Then I have 50 shades of grey on the normal soft yarn base. And um, I, I, I dyed up a few of those. Um, then I have my wonderful color. I love that. The uh, Magic Dust colorway on my glitter base. So this is glitter sock. So you can see all the sparkles in it, and it's a tonal uh, purple um, with um, different shades of purple. Um, one shade is more pink, and the other is more blue, and some darker and lighter spots in it. Um, this is a wonderful colorway. I'll, I already saved one skein for myself because. I cannot miss this, miss out on this. So um, that will be in shop as well. And then I will dye some other stuff up and um, I think I will dye up some seashell because that's sold out right now. And I will also dye up some unicorn poop. Um, and I think that will be it. Oh, and there will also be, sorry, um, some grey yarn in the new base, the overcast colorway. I will also have that on the thicker base, the 100% Marina, um, Superwash Marina. So, that's that about the shop update. Is there something else? No. Oh, uh, yes. Well, I will dye this up on a sparkle base because I'm all... I don't know. I, I just think this will look really good on a sparkle base and then make these really fun, super bright, sparkly socks. And let's be honest, don't we all think that unicorn poo has some glitter in it? So, that makes sense. Um... That's it, actually, um, but I see I have been talking for way too long, um, but what can you do? Um, next week I will be having a short episode, I guess, because I will not have a lot of time to record, 
and uh, I will have a really busy weekend uh, in the next weekend because we have to visit my um, parents-in-law and I have a birthday and well all these things and so I will not have a lot of time um, and after that I will be gone uh, of course so um, we will have to see um, if there will be and if and when there will be episodes but I will try to figure something out and at least upload a small video or whatever from Indonesia if I can um, I hope you have a great week um, and I love to hear from you so let me know whatever you want to let me know in the uh, Revelry group and Happy name, people. Bye.